That I run it Everything you wanna do I already done it And I got your little boo Telling me she love me I got this one Damn one Damn it's gonna be a long night Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Odyssey, and I'm back here with another video. Today I'm doing What If Goku Gained the Renegon. And uh, yeah, I know I said I wouldn't be releasing anything else until I finished everything, but then I realized something, which is the fact that, well, Dragon Ball, I love Dragon Ball, but honestly, it doesn't need character development. It's pretty easy for the series to have already done that. It's already practically done, even though there's another series set to come out. There's really no need for me to like go in depth. So I'm just going to speed through everything, but I'm still going to give you the details and you're still going to like, you know, know what's happening. But I'm not going to go in depth. I'm not going to be talking about every dialogue. I'm just going to be talking about what's happening as purely mostly a narrator, not someone who's going through the story bit by bit. And it also saves me time, meaning that I can also do this series whenever I feel like it and I won't feel stressed. So another reason why I love Dragon Ball, it is a simple series and it doesn't really need much else. It's a you have to just write it simply and uh yeah um if you like this don't forget to like and subscribe and uh hit the notification bell and share this with anybody else who might like what ifs and let's just get right into it so our story starts off with the sage of six pass who was actually conversing with uh zeno after the souls of his sons finally reconciled he soon approached uh got approached by zeno who then granted him true godhood the reason was because zeno just saw his actions and how he acted and just wanted to be his friend this means that, of course, the Naruto verse is going to be part of the DBZ verse. And Hagamo became good friends uh, with Zeno as he always talked to him, and soon Zeno was no longer alone, and neither was Hagamo. He also wanted to let other gods know of his existence, Zeno did, but you know, Hagamo declined. He didn't want to be with other gods. He thought that could spell some trouble, so he was going to stay on his earth instead. So instead of letting himself be known, he promised Zeno that one day he would choose an apostle of sorts and grant him his powers that way Zeno would have another friend because you know um, him and his apostle will be connected and soon he would make Zeno well he would make whoever gets the power Zeno's friend and Zeno said sure he didn't really care he would have another friend so awesome so he gave him like a whole place like God of Destructions do and gave him a crystal ball so look through the universes and pick someone just anyone it can literally be anyone and Zeno won't mind because he's he's his personal friend now since this happens, years upon years have passed as Agaromo has not picked anyone, but he's still kept in contact with the little Zeno. However, one day he found an interesting little boy. He was on Earth, but was part of an alien uh, race, much like he was, which Hagaromo didn't exactly like, you know, like, like he didn't really like Saiyans, uh, except for Saiyans in um, Universe 6, he liked them, but he didn't like us Saiyans in any other universes. But then he took an interest in Goku and watched him grow until he became an adult and he was always so pure hearted. He's just like my little Ashura. However, one day misfortune befell Goku as he was facing Frieza, a tyrant, and soon Goku had beaten Frieza seemingly with his spirit bomb technique and Hagoromo saw this but he knew Frieza wouldn't be so easily defeated. Hagoromo would then watch as Goku's friend Piccolo was uh, almost killed like he was on the brink of death and his best friend, Goku's best friend, was actually killed, exploded to atoms. And he saw Goku finally reaching his breaking point and his anger would overflow as this is when he makes his choice. He was gonna make Goku his apostle. You're a kind soul, my child. You have so much power, yet you do not scorn others. You accept fights wherever you may find them, but you are not a savage. And most importantly, you have a caring heart. You would do anything for your friends. Allow me to give you a little help. Now, as Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan this time, he also gains the Renegon, and he stares down Frieza, who then gets a chill down his spine. And um, he would tell Gohan to pick up Piccolo and leave, because things were going to get messy. When he saw his father's eyes and this new form, at first he protested, but soon he left with Piccolo to find Boma and uh, the ship so they could leave. Frieza would then taunt Goku, saying he was going to kill Gohan as he was flying through the air, and he points at that little boy. But as he did, Goku appeared in front of him, grabbing his hand. I'm going to break you, says Goku. He would then actually shatter the bones like in his arm entirely just by crushing his hand and he had just all this knowledge that rushed in his head instantaneously and this is when he summoned the king of hell for the first time. Hagoromo watching this would be shocked seeing as he had no drawbacks or anything. 
Goku then pulled out Frieza's soul and fed it to the King of Hell as Frieza died right there and then. Goku was amazed at this new power and he could see everything so much more clear by now. He had realized that, well, he had the Renegon. But how did I get this? You will know in due time, son Goku, says Hagoromo. Hagoromo then stops watching as every warrior on the planet that, well, that is alive realizes that Frieza is gone. Gohan saw this and came to his father, seeing a dead Frieza on the floor, and he would be landing hugging his father. Goku then hugged him back, saying he can actually save Piccolo. He then summons the King of Hell um, again and throws him in, and it starts chewing him. Gohan would then freak out, but soon the King reopens his mouth and out comes a fully healthy healed Piccolo, because he wasn't dead dead yet. He was close to, but he was like, you know, able to be saved. How is this possible? Uh, Goku, your hair, your eyes. Goku would then say he'll explain everything later, but right now he's just happy that, you know, Piccolo was back and they need to find the Dragon Balls and fix what Frieza did. They then found the Dragon Balls and Gohan says that the dragon only speaks in Namekian. So they found Guru who was still alive and um, he helped them bring um, back everyone by, you know, summoning the dragon in the ancient tongue of Namek. King Kai was just going to make Kami do it since um, he should be back by now since Piccolo was back, but Goku took care of it and just healed Piccolo with something strange that he had never seen before. Tien, who was on, you know, in heaven, but the Kai would ask, King Kai, you seem troubled, did, did Goku lose? King Kai would then say, no, he, he won perfectly. He has two new types of powers I've never seen before. Frieza never stood a chance. Tien, Shoutsu, and Yamcha um, would then all be shocked as we cut to Namek and every Namekian who was killed is brought back. Then sensing Dende again, Gohan is glad, but he knows that he can't go to him because they have to leave right now. And then he remembers that Bulma is all alone and is probably scared out of her mind. So having finished what they came here for, they uh, finish the wishes and just leave because their Dragon Balls are back again. And they don't want to like bother anybody else on, on Namek and Frieza's men are basically already taken care of. So they leave and on their way they pick up Bulma and this is when they meet Vegeta who marvels at Kakarot's new power and he hears Frieza has been defeated and now with his torn, uh, sworn enemy gone Vegeta is happy and this is when Goku actually says that he should come with them. Gohan and Piccolo rightfully think this is a bad idea but Goku says it's fine as he can stop him if he tries anything funny. So Vegeta goes back with them to earth and when they are traveling Goku works on his skills and the abilities he's gained. He can now absorb energy and he can also create key blasts by you know making uh mechanical appendages you know limbs from anywhere in his body and at first it's a bit freaky but everyone thinks it's kind of cool it's like, it's like he's a living mecha but also human at the same time um then he found out that he could uh, put people under illusions and give them great horror he was on vegeta once um, when he got out of hand and almost destroyed the ship and uh he did it on accident but it still worked so this made vegeta actually train on the ship which bulma uh, and goku would fix sometimes because of his abilities um he was more helpful in doing mechanical stuff and also for some reason he could not breathe in space effortlessly which is something that a saiyan wasn't able to do so vegeta found this very strange but also very impressive and he fixed the ship when it got messed up and he was the best for it because he didn't need a spacesuit he just went outside with that one and um this is when he realized that goku has also gotten smarter because at this point when they look at his eyes um he never disappear first of all and when he looks at you it's like he's piercing into your soul uh, into your soul he's literally just reading everything and just taking everything in his head and it's just and scrambling in his brain it's just like he's getting smarter by the day so they actually take this chance to address the dumb things that he has done and that makes people people feel like annoyed and goku realizes that he's been acting like a mentally disabled motherfucker <laughs> for years now and he actually changes really fast in his attitude and the way he carries himself, but he's still the same old Goku. Um, then he uh, soon found out that um, his key uh, naturally flowed into his eyes, but if he stopped it, his eyes would go back to normal. And if he lets the key flow back into the eyes naturally, he will use the Renegon again. And uh, yeah, then he got to train with his Super Saiyan form. Although Vegeta was feeling a bit jealous, um, when he came back to Earth, he was planning to spar with Goku and beat him and train until he became a super saiyan as well eventually the group does arrive back home and land in the backyard of boma's home and their dr breeze will be welcoming them goku then told gohan that they had to go to chichi because he has some things to say to her uh then they leave dispersing and vegeta ends up staying at uh, boma's house until they had to wish um all the dragon balls you know wish people back and um they relax a bit 
So when Goku goes home and, and arrives, he apologizes to Chi Chi for being so freaking dumb. And then they actually go on their first date, which Goku himself planned. And Chi Chi will be happy about this because Goku seems more calm and just less like a child. He acts his age while at home and he actually helps with housework and lets Chi Chi rest for a while. For once, he actually cooks, which surprises her because his skills match hers and he's actually observing her, you know, learning how to cook himself. And Chi Chi was shocked. For a second, he ad she actually thought that Goku was an imposter, but she realized that he was the same old Goku. Now, soon the gang did, uh, did find the Dragon Balls and brought everyone back to life. And after doing this, everyone was just okay and everything was right with the world again. And everyone went to do their own thing. But before that, they had Goku show off his new powers and these powers surprised everyone, especially since now he had the ability to control gravity and also heal anyone faster than Sensu Beans ever could. He also shows that he can summon some huge beasts that have unique abilities. It's just a lot to take in. Um, then Goku still kept training and Gohan willingly joined him because Goku didn't like force him to go work out with them because there's no danger. He doesn't want to interrupt Gohan's studies, but sometimes Gohan comes by himself and him as well as Piccolo and Gohan train. And while this happened, Vegeta trained the Capsule Corp using the gravity machine. Now one day when Goku was working on something with his Ashura path outside, uh, while Piccolo and Gohan trained, Chi Chi told him that it was time for him to get a car because she's tired of walking everywhere to get groceries and they live really far out in the woods. Goku says sure and goes by himself and he actually aces the test really quickly on his first try and he got a license when he returned and he still saved those people that him and Piccolo would have saved in the original. Uh, when he showed the license to Chi Chi while they were eating, she actually cried as Gohan says, wow dad you can drive me to school now if I get to go to one. Oh, maybe I can even help you study. It'll be fun, says Goku. Um, yeah, dad, if it's not too boring for you, responds Gohan. Chi Chi would then start to cry again, and Goku calms her down, saying it's not that big of a deal, it's okay. <laughs> now, we skip one day uh, to one day when Goku would sense a weird power, and so does Gohan. He would then tell Chi Chi that he was leaving, kissing her on the cheek, making her blush as he then leaves to a barren wasteland. When they arrive, he and Gohan would see a man with a sword on his back, and they land. Who are you, kid? asks Goku. Trunks would then turn around surprised to see Goku greeting him instead of landing from a spaceship. Um, I have to talk to you. Son Goku, I presume? Goku would then say, yeah, um, it's me, sure. Gohan would then worry, but Goku says it's fine as he and Trunks then step away to talk. And as he and Trunks go to talk, the other Z fighters land around and ask Gohan what is going on and who is that guy and why is Goku talking with him. Um, Gohan doesn't know either and Trunks would then be telling Goku that he is from the future and for some reason, Goku seems to be different. He has changed how the timeline is supposed to be going and he was supposed to be crashing down from a ship. Oh, I got these eyes the same time I went Super Saiyan when I was fighting Frieza. It might be because of that, says Goku. He would then show the Renegon as well as his Super Saiyan form shocking Trunks who would ask him what those eyes can do. Goku would then show off most of his abilities including the King of Hell which freaks him out. And when Trunks sees this, he asks if Goku can fight him. He does the same thing as last time, but this time Goku doesn't even lift an arm and uses his Ashura path to deflect the sword strikes with mechanical hands, not even actually using his hands at all, it's just impressive. This shocks Trunks as he definitely says that he can now trust Goku and he hands him the medicine warning him of the heart virus. And he tells him about the androids which will come in 3 years. Trunks would then say, however, it seems that those eyes may have changed the timeline. This time you may not even catch the virus, but just in case. He then tells Goku who is really shocked about this that he's actually the son of Vegeta and Bulma which is really impress like impressive and kind of unexpected because they are the two most stubborn people he knows. But he knows that he can't tell them and you know he's smarter now he's not going to be blurting stuff out and he can't tell the couple that they're going to be a couple soon. So Trunks would then say he wishes him good luck and then he leaves and when he leaves the other Z fighters including Vegeta and Bulma who just arrived would then approach Goku as they see Trunks disappear in a ship to the future. Gohan would then ask, dad who was that? Goku would then take a breath and explain everything he just heard without missing a single word and this shocks everyone but Piccolo already knew because of his big ass ears and now they know they're, they're gonna die in the future but Bulma says they can prevent that by just killing Jiro. But the Z fighters want to fight and she can't really do anything about it. Goku would then say, don't worry Bomo, we're not going to lose. He then uh, reassures them that they're going to be fine because of his eyes and they trust him because he's Goku. So everyone would go off training for days and days on end. Gohan still trains with Goku and Piccolo but this time Chi Chi is more happy with it. Goku would then learn something interesting. When he focuses hard enough his eyes go red and he can open a portal to another dimension. 
He uses this uh, to his advantage, and he and Piccolo and Gohan train in this subspace, and they don't have to hold anything back. They can just destroy everything. Goku would actually share this with the other Z fighters, and they would join him and train there. Um, yeah, they're actually going to be stronger than the original, just a little bit, but still noticeable. Vegeta, however, does not train with them and stays at Capsule Corp, almost training himself to death. And this is when him and Bulma get closer and have the big dirty moments. That's 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 so weird. Um, Goku would then learn he had a bunch more abilities, um, which he's actually keeping secret, but he soon will unveil them. But for now, he's actually working on something really important, even though he finds it cowardly as a fighter. It could be very good in you know battle. So the three years will pass as everyone meets uh, at the city where the androids will arrive. There Goku sees little trunks uh, while Bulma holds him in her hands and everyone is kind of shocked to find out that it was actually Vegeta's baby, not Yamcha's. Goku though already knew and then you know everything goes as the original and they spread throughout the city um, only after Yajirobe arrives. Goku can heal everyone but they are going to split up so yeah. Now, as Yamcha is walking around, he almost gets stabbed in the back, but he actually senses this, um, not because of the key, because androids don't have any, but because of his pure martial arts skills. He dodges the attack, making, um, um, just smacking Jiro's hand away to the side, and this makes him lose balance as Yamcha then grabs his neck and throws him into the ground, just cratering into it. He would then jump into the air, flying and avoiding the, uh, uh, Android 20, sorry. And Android 20 looks really creepy, so... No, yeah you do what you gotta do that thing gotta get away from that thing so this flying um this use of key would alert everyone since yamcha's key is clearly disturbed and everyone flies towards where he is and they see his fun and the androids have appeared so those are the androids they're really weird looking says krillin goku would then land as jiro gets out of the ground and he tells the androids uh goku tells the androids to follow them goku is smarter now and knows that they plan to only kill him so he doesn't want to uh you know affect the entire city so he wants to prevent that before things escalate. Android would listen because he just wants to kill Goku. So he and Android 20 follow the Z fighters to an island with no people. When they land, uh, Goku asks them to turn back um, um, because they don't have to do this. Like he tries to raise them with the Android. Sorry for the pause. Uh, also, if I'm calling Android 20, which is the fat one, um, the wrong number, tell me because I don't really care about him. He dies really fast. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, tell me in the comments. Jiro would then say, oh, but we do have to do this. Then I'm sorry, says Goku. He would then point at Android 20, who would then shatter to pieces before Jiro's very eyes, and he gets pissed. What is this new technique? Th this is not in our database. Krilla would then say, then you need to update it. Goku's changed a lot since then. Actually, too much, honestly. Jiro would then see Goku's eyes and be shocked, wondering what the hell is going on. Goku then slowly starts approaching him, raising his hand in the same manner before Android, um, you know, Android 20 was cut to fucking pieces. So Jiro is scared, looking for a way to escape. But as Goku is about to end this is when Vegeta arrives making a scene and everyone is distracted enough for him to escape. And um, Jiro has a hard time escaping, but he still escapes. He's very fast on his feet. So as he does leave, he ends uh, everything ends up to similar to in the original. And he goes through like, a, I think it was a canyon. It was just like a place with a lot of rocks. Um, they chase Jiro through those places looking for him, but it's hard because he has no key. And as they're looking for him, he ends up uh, making it to his cave and he activates the androids. And this is when he actually hears banging on his locked door. Goku would then yell, it's over Jiro, come out here and accept your fate. So as Jiro uh, activates the androids using his special remote, he would then tell them to attack and protect him as they get out of their pods. But this is when Vegeta blasts down the door and they see the androids as Jiro asks them to kill the Z fighters. However, the androids would kill Jiro, tricking him into letting uh, them touch the remote. And so Seventeen crushed it, and he then cut off his creator's head. The Z fighters are a bit horrified. Vegeta just gets right to it, asking how they want to die, and Eighteen laughs. Pretty big words for such a small man. Vegeta would then get mad, tackling her through the cave as they come out the other side and start fighting. Goku would then say, please give up now. You're still poor human, right? You don't have to do this. Seventeen would then laugh as he goes to punch Goku, but as he did, he is stopped by an invisible force, and Goku just smacks him away with key pressure, sending him out of the cave and slamming into an 18 who was fighting Vegeta. Vegeta would then curse out Goku for interrupting with this fight, and then he transforms into a Super Saiyan, shocking everyone as he then launches towards both uh, 18 and 17. But 18 alone finishes the fight with one blow as she sends Vegeta flying back into the Z Fighters. Tien would catch him, and then they see that his arm is broken. Tien would then look at Goku who nods and then he summons the king of hell and they throw Vegeta into it. 
He then comes out healed and the androids as well as Vegeta are shocked because honestly he hasn't experienced being healed by the King of Hell because he doesn't train with the Z Fighters but now he has and he's kind of a bit confused. So the androids and Vegeta are shocked and Goku tells Vegeta to let him talk to the androids and you know try to stop things but if it doesn't work he can have another go. Vegeta agrees and waits impatiently. Goku then goes towards the androids trying to reason with them but 18 attacks Goku appearing behind him but as she goes to punch him her punch gets stopped by a mechanical arm and she sucked dry of energy, what, whatever they use as a form of energy. Um, then she manages to get free, but then Goku points to her, uh, towards her saying, Shinra Tensei. She would then be hit by a wave of gravity, like just like a huge wave of gravity, as she coughs up um, what little bit of blood she has left in her android body, getting internal injuries um, due to how good Goku is at manipulating his powers now. Goku then catches her looking at eight, uh, 17 as he says, look, she's still alive, she's just out cold. Listen, I don't want to kill you. You're the victim here. You don't have to fight me. Besides, Juro is dead, and you know you wouldn't win. Seventeen would then actually start to believe him because seeing how strong he is, he could have killed both of them, but he didn't. And Eighteen just looks knocked out, not actually dead. However, as he's about to agree to come with them, he's then attacked and dodges a key blast from Trunks, who just arrived and he's in this Super Saiyan form and he is raging. Goku then tells him to stop, but he's blinded by his rage and just drives Seventeen away. Trunks would then go to the Z Fighters who tell him that he should have just listened because Goku was actually bringing them to their side and it was actually working. Trunks would then say, but that's impossible, they're evil to the bone. Goku would then say, yeah, I've actually been thinking about that. I think the future you're from is different and it's in a different universe. Multiverse theory. They then realize that Goku is talking about a multiverse theory and this shows that the androids might be willing to actually become good people, maybe they're different. So as Goku was carrying a knocked out 18, he gives her to Krillin and he tells everyone that he will go find 17. Vegeta then follows him wanting to fight and Goku says no, but Vegeta says if you won't let him fight 17 and find him, then he can just fight Goku right now. Goku would then sigh as he agrees and Vegeta thinks that this must be because uh, Goku fears fighting him because he's finally surpassed him, however he is unfortunately very 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 fucking wrong. I mean I love Vegeta now more than I ever liked Goku, no offense, I still love Dragon Ball. But he's not the same level as Goku, not even close. So as Goku and Vegeta look for 17, three days would pass and it was hard to track 17 because again, he had no key. And as the sun rises and falls, they look for him everywhere. Meanwhile, 18 would wake up in Kami's lookout and on a bed and Boma is right by her, uh, by her telling her to calm down. But then 18 goes to hit Boma, but Krillin blocks her punch saying that if she makes another move, he will touch this remote button that he's holding and she will freaking blow up. 18 then calms down as she sees that they're not really trying to hurt her, but she's not really giving them much of a choice. So she ch she actually chills out. So then they explain um, that the others have actually left now and they're looking for her brother and uh, every other Z fighter has actually left the lookout. They're looking for 17 as well as Goku and Vegeta, but they haven't found him yet. Now hearing this, he runs and leaves um, the lookout with Krillin unable to stop her, so he just follows her, leaving Boma alone on the lookout with Kami and Popo. Um, so right now, Seventeen will find himself in a city, but he sees that there is only a bunch of like clothes on the ground, which is weird, and there's only clothes on the ground and the people are gone, this place is completely desolate. This is when he gets jumped from behind and gobbled up by Cell, who starts to transform. Every of the Z Fighters would sense this huge amount of key but Piccolo was the nearest to it and he went to confront this new enemy. Before the others get to him though, he and Cell would have to fight um, similar to the cannon, but this time he gets freaking demolished, no chances at all, but he still gains the same info and he hopes that he won't have to use this info, hoping that Goku and Vegeta would take care of this monster. When Goku and Vegeta do arrive, they see semi-perfect Cell and Vegeta rushes at him going Super Saiyan, but Cell just dodges his assault and kicks him in the neck with so much force that he is sent flying past Goku and into one of the city buildings, and now he's out cold. Goku would then look at Cell and be disgusted as he can sense the key of other people and this key does not belong to him, meaning that he sucked everyone dry and killed them while taking their energy. And he suspects that, yeah, Cell is the reason why the city is so quiet. You monster, says Goku. Honestly, that's more of a compliment, says Cell. Goku would then use Kaioken as he and Cell then began to fight. Goku was actually keeping up with Cell at this point. When Hagaromo gave him the Renegon, he also now has a bit of divinity, like a bit of god key. And he's actually using godlike essence while using Kaioken, which also makes using Kaioken actually much easier. He's using times like 10 right now and he's barely even feeling it. He doesn't even need to transform. 
um, Sub would soon be shocked because Goku should not be matching him right now, and this data doesn't match up. And what's more shocking is that Goku isn't even actually going Super Saiyan. Goku would then manage to use one of his most powerful abilities, stopping time. Give us back 17. He then slammed five powerful ass punches in Cell's gut as he then on stop time himself fell to his knees, just feeling the worst type of like pain ever. He felt like he was being ruptured from the inside. And he then spits out 17, just as the other Z fighters arrive, including 18, and she runs to 17, shocked and happy that he is alive. And then she thanks Goku. She then goes to kill Sub, but Goku says that it will be useless because he's actually been blowing off his limbs while they fought. And during the fight, he just kept regenerating and said that he has Piccolo cells. So he walked to Cell as he touches his head and then he summoned the King of Hell, shocking 18 as he then rips out Cell's soul, feeding it to the King of Hell. And now Cell would die. Goku did all this while not even using his Super Saiyan form, which was amazing. And so everyone, everything was just over and the team gathered the Dragon Balls. When they did bring back um, everyone who was killed, then they removed the bombs from seven, the bombs from 17 and 18, and soon um, 18 takes a liking to Krillin, and so they get married in the distant future. 18, um, 17 goes to the countryside and finds his wife and becomes a ranger like he's always wanted to. Now by this point, this is when the Supreme Kai would of course sends Goku's power, and he tells Kibito that this mortal seems to be using God Key somehow, so he's technically not even a mortal anymore. So they actually plan to go on uh, on Earth to actually find Babidi, who might be heading for it. And when they get there, they might just meet a, uh, get a chance to meet Goku. So win win, well win loss if Boo gets released. So so after the incident, the Cell incident, about five years passed, and by this point, Vegeta as well as Gohan have attained Super Saiyan 2 due to training as a group. And Vegeta actually trains with Goku, but of course Goku does um, let Gohan study and go going to school he actually has more time for his studies he's balancing things out goku after these years um, has learned even more powers and he can invoke elements a lot of them actually and it's quite easy for him which is also something that hagurama did not expect and much like himself goku didn't need to use hand signs to use these fire jutsus water jutsus whatever he could just like invoke them by thinking about it and releasing energy so this made him quite for, uh, formidable and this makes Vegeta and all the other fighters strong because Goku was far ahead of them so they would have like a common thing to beat. He's like the monster in the group and everyone has to spar with him constantly but they never really win but they do get stronger and so does Goku because Saiyans evolve as they fight. It's like a cycle and it's just unbreakable because Goku is already ahead of everyone. So um, oh, Goku can also go Super Saiyan 2 but he's been actually training more intensely in secret. And he unlocks a new secret form. You know what it is. It's Super Saiyan 3. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Goku achieved it. And he's not going to use it though. So Goku also worked on uh, mastering Genjutsu. That was the little thing that he found a bit shameful to use. Because he's a Saiyan. He should be fighting up front. But he thought it could be very useful to trick enemies when he has no choice. Or he just wants to have fun with it. So um, yeah. He also discovers the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Which makes him happy. And that's how he attains Super Saiyan 3. Because then he uses the uh, clones to share experience and get stronger faster and uh, everyone knows about his other abilities but Goku hasn't told him about the shadow clones or the genjutsu or time stop yet because to them it just looks like he's moving really fucking fast also Goten gets uh, born but he looks different he's not a carbon copy of Goku and I hate that they did that okay Goku was gonna come back but like the showrunners didn't really know they were gonna, they were gonna do that yet they were gonna make Gohan the main character but and they tried to replace Goku with a little Goten that was wrong Goten looks like his own person. He is his own person. And in fact, his personality will be a bit different, a bit smarter, because Goku is also going to be smarter. So uh, yeah, at the age of six, he actually gets Super Saiyan before Trunks, who is kind of uh, jealous about it, but they're still friends. And the reason why Gohan is, I mean, Goten is so strong is because, well, daddy's home. Goku was back. He doesn't, he's not like in the original and he has changed a lot. So soon Gohan is going to go to high school for the first time in Satan City. Jesus Christ, that sounds so demonic and like a cult. So this means that Hercule Satan still went and like, you know, blew up. And he actually just didn't beat Cell this time, but he was still a martial artist that was really like feared because I want to remind you guys that yes, Hercule cannot freaking destroy plants with key blasts, but he pulled a truck with his teeth. That takes a lot of strength. So I think he kind of deserves that title. 
So as he runs, uh, as Google uh, Gohan runs out on like his first day, taking his lunch and saying bye to Chi Chi, he runs out to see his dad meditating and he says bye to him. Oh, take Nimbus today, says Goku. Gohan would then say okay, jumping uh, and summoning Nimbus, who would then push him away, and he arrives at school. Things go as in the original with Videl getting suspicious of him and follow him because in the morning he actually saved the bank going Super Saiyan and you know he sell uh, he, he he saved people. Why am I stuttering with that? So he actually uh, asks his dad for help this time instead of Bulma. And when Goku hears about this, he tells Gohan that he doesn't honestly care if people find out and he shouldn't really have to hide it, but he will help. And he then brings Gohan to Bulma the next day. And before he goes to school, instead of what Bulma makes him, which honestly looks fucking dumb as hell, they take away the antenna from the mask and just keep the same mask. And they remove the cape because from Goku's point of view, he says, there's no point in having a cape because it will get in the way and people will grab it. And it was actually shown that it did get in the way as Rodell grabbed his cape when he was in costume and was about to fly away. So it can get really annoying. So they just removed the cape and the antenna and now he looks way cooler. And Trunks actually agrees. So this is Gohan's new costume without the antenna and the uh t the cape i couldn't remove the antenna but you get what i'm saying gohan would then go do his thing be a superhero but soon videl still finds out and makes him train her and make her learn how to fly he black she blackmails him which is really messed up and i'm about to address that and she also makes him want to enter the tournament so one day as goku is out in the open field training his two boys gohan goes super saiyan and goes to sweep kick him but he does nothing he just literally does nothing and goku just kicks him in the stomach which sends him flying Goten and go Super Saiyan, um, going all up in Goku's face, and he also gets smacked away. Gohan would then come back up with a punch, but Goku catches it, stopping its impact as he then slams it down, and then Goku sends him flying using a Shinra Tensei, which, um, yeah, sends him flying while he hits him in the chest. Come on, you've been slacking, haven't you, says Goku. The three would then be going back and forth, and soon Gohan senses Videl and stops fighting, which kind of confuses his father and brother. He would then tell them to leave, and Goku says no because he doesn't want to. Gohan has to give in because it's his dad. He can't really make him do anything anyway. And um, yeah. So Videl would land and see the three. And he she sees Goku. And then Goten who's smiling like crazy. And Gohan just looks dead inside. So Gohan, introduce me to the girl, says Goku. Gohan would then say this is Videl and she's a classmate. And Goten says hi as Gohan introduce, uh, introduce, introduces Goku to Videl. Father, you know, brother. Videl would then say, so this is the famous Goku, huh? He's not that strong. Goku would then laugh as Goten and Gohan start feeling bad for Videl, and Goku says, Why are you here, young lady? Videl would then say uh, she came here to make Gohan train her, and honestly, Goku thinks that she's being condescending, and because she arrived in the copter, he's assuming she's a rich brat. He then tells her to leave, and Videl is confused. What? But I'm supposed to- Goku would then say, but nothing. Come back here without that thing. Martial artists shouldn't be so reliant on machines. And blackmailing. Videl would then stutter, being a bit mad, as she then says, just because he's buff, that doesn't mean he's a martial artist. Okay, says Goku, come at me. If you can touch me, you can stay. Big bro, she's gonna lose, isn't she, says Goten. Videl would then get mad at this comment and attack Goku, but she can't even get within 5 feet close to him, as Goku is always ahead of her, and she thought that his muscles would be slowing him down, but like, he's way faster, and he hasn't even been trying at all, he's not even, yeah, he's just playing around. She tries for about 3 hours and soon is exhausted on the ground. Goku then tells her to go home and come back when she's actually wanting to learn martial arts and stop acting like a bitch. He doesn't actually say bitch, but I think that Videl at the beginning is a bit bitchy and bratty. Um, Goku then leaves with his boys and Gohan says nothing. And while they're flying away, Gohan then finally says, Weren't you a bit harsh, Dad? Gohan, Goku would then say, Gohan, she blackmailed you. Don't be so freaking naive. Besides, she does have great potential. I just want to stop acting all high and mighty and apologize. No matter what her reasons are, she probably stalked you and that's a crime as well. Gohan would then say, I guess you're right. Goku would then smile saying, don't worry, she'll be back. She looks determined. The next day, Videl would come back with her haircut and uh, on foot and she was exhausted as hell. And she then bowed to Goku, begging him to let Gohan train her. And Goku said, okay. Goku would then say, fine, but no more blackmailing. My son isn't someone for you to use, got it? I am his father, you know. Videl would then apologize sincerely and Gohan wants to enter the tournament of his own free will because he thought it'd be fun to get the game back together anyway. And uh, yeah, she can come and train and she actually comes to their home and eats. Gohan is happy again and they have dinner together and then Gohan trains Videl. Meanwhile, Goku was on the lookout meditating with Piccolo and they actually began to do this a lot because became uh, Goku became more spiritual, I guess you could say. 
and they kind of became their thing. They meditated together and also did image training while meditating, which for Z fighters is very extreme because they actually visualize themselves beating the hell out of each other in their minds. However, as they're on the lookout, this is when Supreme Kai would appear and Goku as well as Piccolo would notice his energy, but it feels somewhat weird because it's there and it's not there. They feel this pressure. You are Goku, correct? Asked Kai. Goku would then say, yeah, and he, um, Shin introduced himself as a uh, Supreme Kai and this shocks them and out comes Kami as Shin says that he wants to take Goku to his world. Goku agrees to come and um, so does Kami and he says that Shin is a naturally bad person and so Shin Kai Kai's them to their world, the world of Kai's and there Goku pulls out the Z sword and soon breaks it while training. This releases the old Kai who would then thank Goku as well as sense Goku's divine energy so he decides to unlock Goku's potential. He would go through the same ritual and Goku sits there quietly and as the Kai was helping him unlock his power, he actually started thinking about the whole divine power thing because the Kai has told him that he had divine power as well and he starts unknowingly circulating it in his body and he's being enhanced. Uh, also the reason why people can still like kind of sense Goku's power is because he hasn't fully assimilated his god energy, they mostly come from his eyes because that's the power he was given but soon people will not be able to sense his energy as he will be fully a god. So um, yeah, he would just start circulating the energy in his body as he's being enhanced. And after a few hours, the Kai finishes and Goku was still stuck in meditation. But then he would burst with pure white ki and it pushes back Kibito, Shin, and the old Kai himself. Incredible. How can a mortal have such power as Kibito? Goku would then open his eyes and he is in mystic form, which is way stronger than his Super Saiyan forms, all combined. He looks at himself and is amazed by the amount of power he now has. And this is when he realizes that he has another ability and he wants to test it out. He just keeps getting these visions of how to use the abilities. He tells the Kais to stand back and as they do, um, he stares at a boulder and it catches fire, black fire. The Kais would watch as the boulder melts from the, uh, the flame and Goku just puts it out. They were pretty impressed because they sense divine power from this black flame and it looks like flames from hell. They were super black. Goku would then spend a bit of time on the Kais world learning what he can do with this divine mystic form. Um, sometimes when he would power up, it would shake the entire Kai's world, which was pretty impressive. And upon training with the Kai's, Kibito also taught him the Kai Kai, you know, teleporting for Kai's, which make, means that he can basically go anywhere whenever he wants. And he didn't expect Goku to actually master it, but he did. Then after training a while, they tell him about Boo and how much of a menace he was and how Boo may reappear on his world. Goku then takes to, uh, this to heart and promises that the Kai's will not have to do much and he will take care of Boo himself, so you don't have to worry. Then he teleports himself home just in time for Gohan to tell him that the tournament is coming up and in fact he's he's really happy about it because you know even though Videl blackmailed him to begin with he does want to do it now like I said. So they get uh, Chi Chi's approval to fight and Chi says fine because she actually kind of likes Videl now and uh, he tells him that they have to win because they need some money right now. So Gohan would spread the news to the others and they want to get back into it as well you know it's been a while. So Videl would keep coming back for training sessions until the uh, tournament learns how to fly as well as some actual fighting skills mostly from Goku because Videl doesn't want to believe that his dad can't beat, uh, her dad can't beat Goku. And um, she says that if she can beat him then that means that she reaffirms that her dad is the strongest because she has this idea of her father in her mind. However, she never came close to even beating Goku because he never even had to touch her for her to be sent flying. And soon, um, she started to realize that Goku was just that strong and that the world is just wide. I mean, Hercule is just, he's just in a city. There are way, there are artists that can easily kick his ass, actually. And her dad isn't the only martial artist out there, and she realizes that. So soon, the day of the tournament comes up, and everyone is um, in Capsule Corp's ship, you know, Boma's ship, and flying through the sky, and they arrive on the island where the fight is supposed to happen. When they arrive, the fighters go get signed up, and they meet the Proctor, who was kind of an old buddy, because he's seen them fight as kids. And it kind of feels nostalgic. And um, they get signed in while the others try to find seats. The Z fighters would then go through the same trials, destroying everything in their way, putting others to shame and making them quit. And seeing their strength in action just shocks Videl even more because even 18 who joined, uh, who looks the weakest, is stronger than she is. And honestly, right now, she's losing a lot of confidence. But Gohan says that they're veterans who have been fighting literally since they were born, except for 18. She only started recently. And they mostly did nothing else but fight, uh, fighting. And while they were in the line and the junior division was going on, you know, Gohan would say, you know, Krillin was practically born into fighting. He was a monk. 
my dad used to live in the woods and he was top of my grandpa who was one of the best martial artists in the world and he was a toddler at that age and vegeta well he's just a completely different story so as they're talking the junior division would go the same and eventually the adults finish uh, registering and come to watch the youngins you know the little boys let's see how these kids are doing and it was trunks versus goten that really shocked the crowd but in this timeline, Goten actually wins because his dad is here and they train a lot, meaning that he has more control over his key and his Super Saiyan form. So when Goten wins, it makes Trunks very jealous, but he tries hard to catch to his friend. This actually builds more of a rivalry because now Trunks can't under, uh, underestimate Goten just because he's young, uh, younger than him. And it was still a close match though, but yeah, because Trunks is older, he has a bit more strength anyway. Also, um, Yoku was smarter now, so Goten, when he fought, he was actually, you know, using some wisdom so goten ends up winning and punching mr satan but when he gets punched this time he actually gets sent flying through the arena and the crowd thinks it was all fake special effects because they're dumb dumbs Vidal was shocked at the fight but then the others said eh it was all right it wasn't really much and the adults then get to you know really fight because their match is coming up now we're gonna skip to when Videl is fighting and uh, when she is she's getting beaten up by uh, spopovich and Goku starts to realize who Sp uh, Spopovich is, and he actually finally tells the others about the wizard Babidi or Warlock, whatever. And his father, Bibidi, created a monster who is really dangerous. Also, since Babidi is a warlock or sorcerer, whatever, he probably brainwashed Spopovich and Yamu. Now, this makes Gohan want to jump in even more because Videl is legit getting destroyed, but Goku has a better idea. So, activating his uh, Rene Sharingan, he sees the spell. Like, he literally sees the uh, key inside, uh, inside Spopovich. Why am I stumbling today? So, he would um, see the disturbed and eerie key, like how it feels so demonic. And he actually gets rid of the spell entirely. Everyone has their own unique abilities when they get the Dojutsu, the Sharingan. And Goku's Rene Sharingan gives him the ability to manipulate key on a god level. But he, as well as the others, have not realized this. He just uses it instinctively. So he unravels the spell and Spopovich loses his Majin Mark and he transforms back into a normal human, losing his pale skin and veins everywhere and immense strength. The crowd will be shocked and confused and so will be Yamu who knows that he can't intervene right now or it might ruin the plans. Videl then turns to look at Gohan who is hugging his dad thanking him so much and she's confused but she just starts fighting Spopovich and actually destroying him back and now that he's just back to normal and can't even use Ki. And after the match is over, Spopovich is arrested for using drugs because that's the only explanation that they have. So when Videl goes back to the others, Gohan hugs her as tight as he can and she blushes as does Gohan, realizing what he's doing and the others kind of snicker as, you know, Krillin kind of teases Gohan. Uh, Goku would then summon the King of Hell. Walk in, says Goku while smiling. And Videl says, what? I'm not walking into that thing. Gohan would then say, trust me, it'll fix you. I know it looks creepy, but still. So Videl, being hesitant, um... Uh, goes in because she trusts gohan and as she would enter the king would kind of close his mouth kind of chewing her looking like and she instantly is spat back out healed and she's shocked out of her freaking mind as she begs goku to teach her dad but she says it's literally impossible so then um soon gohan has to actually fight some guy and it's not kibito this time because they don't feel the need to enter the tournament since goku was there and they trained him personally and he beats the guy whoever he is fighting and this is when yamu takes his chance to leave not wanting to take a um, you know, chance being here because his partner was just depowered. It might happen to him too. And as he leaves the stadium, Goku follows him as do the others. Goku tells Gohan to stay here and win because Chi Chi will kill them if he doesn't and they can handle everything on their own so it's fine. So Videl also stays in the Z Fighters lead to follow Yamu and as he's leaving, Shin and Kibito appear by them shocking the other fighters because they don't know who the hell they are but Piccolo does. Um, Goku then introduces them, and knowing that they're basically gods only makes the situation weirder. So they find where Yamu um, lands, and they see a short man as well as a man who looks um, demonic, and a little guard at his side, which would be, I don't know, that little guard that Vegeta beats the crap out of. So um, the demonic guy is, of course, Dabura. So as they wait to infiltrate, and they see like the opening of the ship, it's just underground a bit, Yamu just blows up as his guts splatter everywhere and they're a bit weird of Babidi now and so they hide their key even more. But Dabura notices them as he appears right by the group in the mountains and the Kais get scared. You thought you mortals could sneak up on me? Oh, Supreme Kai, what a surprise. He then goes to key blast them but as he does, Goku looks at his attack and he returns to himself, hitting himself and he gets pissed but before he can say another word, Goku appears behind him, 
yanking out his soul which shocks his bro because he's practically the devil in his world he's like the demon lord but as goku rips out his soul he just He's just dead, and Goku actually gets some of his memories, meaning that he knows Bobby D's entire plan. Goku would then say, come on guys, let's go. Supreme Kai would then say, incredible. I knew I made the right choice, but what was that technique? I, I felt I felt him pulling Dalbra's very essence, says Supreme Kai. Thank you, Supreme Kai. This would make Kibito and Shin very weary of Goku, but they're happy that he's not their enemy. So as they enter the ship, Goku explains uh, Bobby D's plan, and they ask how he knows this, and he tells them, um, when I use that technique I used earlier, I can take someone's memory, so, um, yeah. The others would be shocked about this because it is a very OP ability. And then they head down, all of them actually, none of them are turned into stone, not Krillin, not Piccolo. And they fight enemies very easily, and Goku takes care of them all because, as he's explained, they don't have time to mess around. However, this is pissing off Bobbity as well as Vegeta. And seeing that they're going to reach him soon, Bobbity actually reaches, um... Vegeta, because he has no capable guards, he might die, and he chooses to control Vegeta. So, as they're entering the third final part before they, you know, uh, the third floor up from before they meet um, Babidi, you know what I'm saying. This is when Vegeta falls to his knees, screaming with pain in his voice as he starts to gain more power. His muscles tense up and bold. He has veins all over him, and Supreme Kai knew what was happening and told Vegeta to fight Babidi's control. But as he says this, everyone is pushed back by a lightning coming from Vegeta's pure power. And Goku says, Vegeta, don't let him in your mind. This is not your will. Vegeta would then scream, breaking Bobbidi's control and his crystal ball, which shocks him. However, Vegeta still kept the Majin mark and a huge amount of power. And now he was in his Super Saiyan 2 form, but he was much stronger. Vegeta then told Bobbidi to teleport everyone to the stadium. And as he did, um, because it would be uh, benefit him, um, Vegeta wants to do something that is very conniving and evil. And when they arrive at the stadium, Gohan would just be beating Videl, and you know, he already beat uh, 18, blah blah blah. He's the champion now, and this is when Gohan is actually being announced as the winner when Vegeta tries to blast everyone in the stadium to oblivion. However, this attack is about to reach the stadium when Goku activates his Renegon, which makes the attack explode to nothing. This makes everyone leave because they're seemingly under attack by a terrorist of sorts, but luckily nobody can see Vegeta's face. And Goku tells everyone to get, um, other people clear as he tries to calm down Vegeta himself and they trust him and they leave him to it. Vegeta, don't tell me you did this of your own free will. Please tell me you didn't just try to kill our friends, your wife. Vegeta would then say, none of that matters. All that matters is us right now, Kakarot. Fight me. I am your prince. No, your king. Obey me. He then powers up tackling Goku into the sky as they start fighting. And as they're fighting, Goku would still be in his base form, not trying to fight because he has grown to like Vegeta, but as soon as he has no choice, he enters Super Saiyan and catches a punch from Vegeta. He then palm strikes him in the stomach, making Vegeta spit out blood, and then Goku kicks him across the face using wind um, just to blow him away. And this actually causes Vegeta to pierce the clouds as he's being sent away, and Goku chases after him. They then have a fight um, holding nothing back as they're making the planet shake, and they're crashing into boulders making craters in certain areas completely making the world just feel like it's shattering their sheer power is too much for the planet to handle and we see the two saiyans appear on the ground as they're going back and forth Goku would then smack vegeta with a kick as he then throws a right hook at his liver he then elbows vegeta in the chest as he then uses shin or tensei to send vegeta flying into a mountain and now he is stuck in it he would then get out of the mountain piss seeing goku who's actually having no scratches at all and not even a piece of dirt on him Goku would then say, Vegeta, I haven't even used half of my full power. Don't do this. Our fight might lead to the Earth being in danger. You really want to do that to your wife? Your son? Vegeta would then actually realize Goku is kind of right. He built an entire family here. And now he's about to throw it all away just to beat Goku. Goku would then say, Vegeta, you're a genius fighter. But I'm just different. I'm not, I I'm not against you. Someone as smart as you shouldn't be doing dumb things like this. Damn it, says Vegeta. He then falls to the ground after being tired and receiving all that beating, but as he does, he starts to be controlled by Bobbidi again. This is when Goku actually finally uses his eyes to disrupt the spell, but because he's never really messed with magic, he only removes Bobbidi's control, but Vegeta still retains the power-up, which is actually a good thing. Vegeta then thanks him as um, Goku teleports them back to Bobbidi's base, and when they arrive, they, seems, uh, they see Supreme Kai, um, cornering the warlock Babidi because he kai kai there and behind him uh, behind Babidi is this giant ball that looks like 
a gumball. It was just pink and veiny. I'm assuming that's Majin Buu waiting to wake up, asked Goku. Shin would then say, yes, we have to stop Babidi from escaping with it. Done and done, says Goku. He would then use his Sharingan, pulling Babidi up close to him as he then catches his head in his hand and then he breaks Babidi's head, exploding it with sheer strength and the Kais are shocked. J just like that. Just what are those eyes, asked Kibito. He's there too. Goku would then set um, Babidi's body on fire as he was holding him and he burns the ashes in Goku's hand, who says, whatever these eyes are, they do come in handy, you know. Everyone then agrees, definitely, because he, he just destroyed all their troubles with one look. And everyone, um, just everything is fine. Shin and Kibito uh, carefully teleport um, the, you know, what is Boo in a ball to the Kai's world. And they thank Goku, letting him know that he can come visit anytime. As Babidi turns to freaking flames, Goku turns to Vegeta and notices that even with Babidi gone, Goku, um, Vegeta, sorry, why am I stumbling so much? God damn. Vegeta has retained the power up just without the mark. What say you and I wreck this place, says Goku. Vegeta would then make a key ball and blast it as he agrees, and Goku and him fly up while destroying the ship to smithereens, killing the guards as well. Then Goku Kai Kai's them outside um, the stadium, and they see their friends waiting for them. When Boma and Trunks see Vegeta, they're a bit hesitant uh, at first, but then they realize he's back to normal, and the family shares a hug even though Vegeta still acts like a Sundere, but he does really care. Then he actually apologizes for uh, what he did because it was mostly Babidi, but he also wanted to destroy everything and he's man enough to admit that. Everyone then forgives him in the end because they can tell he's being sincere and everything was fine. Then the Proctor would come up to the Z Fighters thanking them for a good fight and he said that he didn't get to see Goku fight like like the old days and they explain what happened you know with the whole vegeta thing but they calmed him down and he says that everything will be fine gohan will get the prize money soon um and this means that gohan has actually proved that he's stronger than hercule and since everyone sees how young and buff he is and due to the fact that he didn't use super saiyan or anything um that proof is uh, uh, authenticity because they would have thought he was using like magic tricks or a, you know a trick it's a trick like hercule always says so he only fought with his base form through it all, never needing to actually power up. And this proved his authenticity. And due to that, Hercule is not really the champ anymore. Because Hercule never beat Cell, meaning that nobody has this freaking idea of him being a god of strength. So him getting beat by a young guy is not that big of a deal. But he still does have respect and a shit ton of money. So after all that, um, he... Like I said, he did manage to pull a truck with his teeth. That's amazing. On um, like Hercule was pretty strong for a human, okay? He's just a coward sometimes. So time skip a few years, and after this little skirmish, the Earth will be at its safest time ever. There are no monsters attacking, but the Z Fighters do still keep fighting and you know training. Gohan ends up marrying Videl and he meets Hercule. And when Hercule soon, uh, soon meets the Son family, he realizes why Gohan beat him with ease. And also with the income of cash that they got from the prize and Hercule without being um Gohan's father-in-law means that they're actually stinking rich the Son family is stinking rich not as rich as Bulma but still and um yeah um Hercule realizes that um yeah this family is full of monsters Gohan's mom was a martial artist as was his dad and even his little brother they literally have fighting in their blood so he understands also Gohan does dive deeper into his work he still keeps being same man and Videl actually joins him and he still trains on the side Goku goes to master all the elements that he can now use and in very interesting ways actually. He also uses the Shadow Clone more often which uh, allows him to gain a lot of power and now even if he fought like a Super Saiyan in his base form it would be enough to deal with it like a Super Saiyan 3. He would be able to fight a Super Saiyan 3 just in his base form and that would be enough to deal with it. That's how OP he is. Also Vegeta can use Super Saiyan 3 but he doesn't because it looks grotesque and he learns to harness the power in his base Super Saiyan 2 form. So Vegeta also soon uh, is told by Goku that uh, he has what the, call, uh, the Kai's call Divine Key, otherwise known as God Key, and it's ba uh, this baffles him. But he is starting to realize that Goku's energy is kind of diminishing, but every time they spar, Goku is only stronger than him, and everyone has noticed this, but then when Goku explains it, it's God Key, they kind of understand, but that only cements how much weirder Goku has become. But he is still determined to get ahead of Kakarot, so yeah. In fact, the rivalry actually grows more with Vegeta managing to always train when he can, but of course Goku is way ahead of him. And um, Goku rarely has to even transform now, so 
this gives him more time with the Renek Sharingan, learns how to phase through things, as well as effortlessly manipulate gravity to his will with no time limit. He doesn't just use Shin Sensei and pulling things to him and all that. He can legitimately crush you down if he has enough control, and he does. And he also learns how to easily manipulate uh, Ki, learning about his unique ability. And now he is massively smart and is even better in fighting. So fighting him is weird because he's like a tactical genius and you will lose even if he basically does nothing. Now we're gonna cut to Bulma as she's celebrating um, her birthday and a party. They're having a party at Capsule Corp. Everyone was invited, including Hercule, Videl, 18, everyone, except for Bulma's sister because she couldn't make it. And we've seen in the anime that she just likes to be alone. Now we then see Goku talking to Vegeta and they're just talking about, you know, what they're able to do now, their training, but also about their life, which kind of shows that they become more than just rivals and training partners over the years. They're actually friends now. And Vegeta is still soon there though, so yeah. However, as everyone is having fun, this is when Goku senses a huge amount of God Key, and it feels so evil. He would then start running towards the key, and he would end up behind uh, Bulma's huge house, and he sees a huge walking to uh, purple cat, as well as a man who looks pale and has a halo around his neck, and he was holding a staff. Vegeta would then run to find Goku, and in front of him, he sees Beerus. <laughs> Lord Beerus! And that is where I'm going to leave this off. Welcome to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe, like I said, and hit that notification bell. And uh, share this with anybody else who might like what ifs. Also, um, it might feel a bit too rushed for you guys, like the way I did this series, but honestly, I don't think I can do it anyway, man. I just can't. Dragon Ball is really annoying to write, even though it's such a simple series. So I just went with the simple way. I just went through everything very fast. Goku is OP now. You can thank me later. Also, um, I haven't posted what if Naruto had Akiji's powers in a while, so that's next. And then after that, it will be, I think, what if Deku was a speedster? Because I know you guys are waiting on that one. And I'll make it even, like, you know, longer than last time. So, yeah, be waiting for that. And I will see you guys later. My class is about to start. Um, so, yeah, take care. Till next time, guys.